In this video, we finally duke it out with temp tables and table variables, and we look at them from the aspect of if you're using them straight from the command line in T-SQL. We're not really going to go into stored procedures or user-defined functions, partly because table variables win in a user-defined function, hands down, because you cannot use temp tables. So really, take what you learn here and then, you know, go forward and figure out, you know, what seems best to you. Uh, what I have on the screen right now and by the way, this is very condensed. If you've seen the way that I usually code stuff, th I, there's actually a lot more white space and indenting. But for the sake of argument, from the word declare all the way down here to the asterisks, all this down here is basically where I define a table variable. And it's a small one. It has three fields plus, you know, an identity field that I thought I'd put in. And then just to insert this is all this plus the from. And then last but not least, I'm just selecting from it. So let's take a look at that. Let's just run that real quick. But doesn't that seem like a lot of code just to do that? It is a lot of code just to do that. But notice this. I can keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Yay! I never have to, like, turn something off or, um, you know, basically the way that a, t a table variable is a variable. Um, there's no persistence whatsoever. It's basically interpreted. It's memory only, there's no disk, there's really no artifacts, you know, like there's no, I guess, connection related undead, like things creeping around in the temp database, like with a temp table that you just can't seem to kill and don't know what they belong to. Um, so you never have to drop them. You never have to drop a table, as a matter of fact, you can't drop a table variable. They're self-dropping, you know? Just, uh, I guess, no, uh, no, no real motivation. But anyway, down below, as a comparison, what we have here is for a temp table. Now, let me let me go back up a little bit. By, by comparison, let me just move this stuff out of the way. If you were to look at this whole entire thing, this is a lot of code to do really exactly the same thing as just this down here. The only difference is in this case, we're going to be making a temp table. Now when we do that, I am adding an identity field, and I am picking the fields that I want, okay? I am picking the fields that I want, um, and we'll show an even better way to do this in a second, but watch this. I'm going to go on here, and I'm going to hit execute. Now by the way, that's going to give us an error message, and that was intentional. Cannot add identity column, blah, blah, blah. What this is saying, see what I have commented out? Let me just show you something really quick, because you're going to run into this. It's inevitable. If I have my own identity that I'm using to populate this temp table, one of the things, now in a table variable, it could care less, because a table variable, there's really, if you're pulling in, if you're doing a select from another table, it doesn't really capture the identity property of that. But with a temp table, it does, and it can screw things up. So instead of taking an identity from another table, you actually have to cast it and convert it to an int, but then you still have to name the field, even though the name's right here. Once I do something like a cast, it loses its name, so I have to, you know, kind of, hey, it loses its identity in a couple of ways. Anyway, so you have to rename it. So basically, but just this couple of lines of code in comparison to the tome that I wrote up here, watch what it does. Now that I have this all happy and we strip that out of it, it does the same thing. Look at this, da da da, you know, returns everything from the temp table. Now, one of the other differences between a table variable and a temp variable is watch this, can't go forward. There's already an object named whatever I named that in the database. So a temp table, while this window is open, meaning this specific window's connection to SQL Server is still plugged in, you can't recreate that table more than once. So if you want to, for whatever reason, or if you're looping through stuff and you're recreating it and uncreating it, you, know, you have to use a drop table. Let me show you one last thing. Let's, if you don't mind, let me, let me um, move some code around. Because I want to show you one of the reasons why so many developers are in love with temp tables. And I'm not, I'm not knocking that affection. I still like table variables better. I'm a little biased. But, you know, don't forget, I've done a lot, lot, lot of this in my time. Overall, I like the table variables better. What you could do, if you didn't care... See, now I have a different name, temp2 instead of just temp, so I can do this without killing anything. If I wanted to load everything from the customer type table into this temp table just because for the sake of argument, the thing about a temp table, you can do a select into a temp table. You really can't do that with a table variable. Um, and I know everybody's going to try as soon as they're done watching this, but 
Good luck with that. Let me know how it works. Um, with this, you have to declare and define the temp table. No way out of that. Just like when you're building a table in SQL Server, if you're building a hard table, it's like, well, what does it need to look like? What's the schema? And then you have to do kind of, you know, the hard sort of insert on that. But if you were doing a select into even a hard table with a select into, whatever you're selecting is going to define what the table looks like, what the temp table in this case looks like, or it could have been a hard table. Um, all I would have to do is get rid of the hash mark, and it would be a hard table named temp2 if it didn't already exist. Um, so when I select star, this is going to take everything from this table. Notice I'm not putting a row number, I'm just keeping it really light. So in this case, with a temp table, if I was lazy, all I would have to do is say select star into, and then the temp table, from whatever. And then I just have to do a select, and that's it. You're in and you're out. You don't care what all the fields are. Now, depending on what you're doing, that may not be the way to do it. Because this table could have, you know, 50 different fields in it. And there could be like 20 years of data, probably not 20, maybe like 12, 15 years of data. And there could be like 30 million records. So, you know, putting that in a temp table doesn't really save you anything. If you're taking a fraction of the records and maybe some of the fields, like maybe all the records in there from like last month or last week and just from New York as the state as opposed to the whole country, yeah, then, it, then you're kind of getting somewhere before you use those results to join up against other stuff. But anyhow, a lot of code, a little code. What's better? It all depends. Um, if you're just being lazy and you want to put something together in a hurry, well, I would say go this route. But you have to ask yourself if what you're doing is smart enough with performance. Every case is different. Not going to eval evaluate that for you. That's up to you. But notice this. Watch this. I just ran that. Let's let's put the stuff up here so we can see it. I ran that, and it gives me everything that I want. And it was just this line of code versus writing my life history up here. Let's run it again. Oh, can't do it. That's one of the fallback. That's one of the um, that's one of the prices that you pay for temp tables. If you need to, you have to. Depending on what you're doing, if you're looping through stuff, if you're just doing all kinds of neat stuff, you always have to say, "Does it exist? Do I need to drop it?" Am I going to drop it, recreate it, drop it, recreate it? And you have to remember, too, that if you um, are selecting from the temp database .dbo .sys objects, you don't know what that temp table is called. And you can't always drop the temp table if it, does, if it doesn't exist, because you'll get an error. So you really, temp tables can kind of bite you that way. Whereas here, with a table variable, watch this, more code, but look what I can do. Click, 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 click. Click, click. I just like saying click, click, click. So anyway, those are the basic differences. It's a little more to set up a table variable than it is a temp table, especially, especially, especially if for the temp table you're just doing a select star into temp table. That's like the golden easy way to do stuff. Unless you're joining several tables and they have similar names for the fields, then you have to be a little more smart about how you do that. But for a table variable, Look, you spell it out one time, and then it can never hurt you by persistence, because it, it doesn't persist, you know? It doesn't stick with anything. It'll never amount to anything. A table variable, it's just like writing stuff on the blackboard. You run it, you get your result, and you erase it every time. So from that standpoint, there's no greenhouse emissions, there's no carbon footprint. You run it, it's done. It never sees disk, it never sees the light of day. It does what you ask it, and then it goes poof. Temp tables, although they're a little easier to set up maybe, the thing is sometimes they have staying power when you least want it, and in an example like this, big deal, so what, just put drop table, but if you're doing something really big in a stored procedure with a lot of things looping here and there, inevitably, you know, some problem with your logic comes up, it rears its ugly head, and it'll stop your program and its tracks. So. You have to decide which is better for you, but most of the time, unless I'm doing something quick and down and dirty, I like the table variables, just my opinion.